This is the uh, chapter 4, section 4 podcast, and this one's on aquatic ecosystems. <clears throat> right there you see a mangrove, and we'll be talking about that later on. So, uh, so obviously we're talking about a lot about water, and the earth, nearly three-fourths of the Earth's surface is covered with water. And almost all these bodies of water have some type of life in it, and there's a very wide variety of communities with all kinds of different biotic and abiotic factors that determine this. So what are the main factors that govern these e aquatic ecosystems? They're determined primarily by depth, flow, uh, temperature, and the chemistry of the over overlying water. So, um, so the ecosystems are often grouped by the factors that affect them and the depth this is a big one the depth of the water determines the amount of light that organisms receive and you can see that very important here water chemistry talks about what's dissolved inside the water and uh, and another big overall factor is that what you find in the shallow water close to shore is going to be very different from what's in your deep water and also, once again, latitude is an important fact, abiotic factor to uh, aquatic ecosystems too. And I think what holds true for land holds true for aquatic ecosystems is that the further north you go, the colder it gets. So what are two types of freshwater ecos ecosystems? They're going to be divided into two types, flowing water ecosystems and standing water ecosystems. So oop, that's a little dark. but. River, streams, creeks, brooks, freshwater ecosystems that flow over land, and the or the organisms have to be uh, adapted to the rate of the flow. So these flowing water ecosystems originate in mountain and hills because water is flowing downhill. And at the start of it, you're going to see a lot of if you have turbulent water, which is water that's moving pretty strongly, you're not going to have little. You're going to have very little plant life, and as the flow, as the water flows downhill, sediments, such you know, which makes soil, will build up, and you'll have plants be able to grow. And when you get to the bottom of the hill, downstream, the water's going to slow, uh, meander slowly. It's going to move slowly, and there you're going to have a lot more, a lot more animals uh, living near in that area. Lakes and ponds are standing water ecosystems. And, uh, and you're going to have water coming in and out, but you're also going to have water circulating inside the, the pond. And this helps to distribute heat, oxygen, nutrients throughout the ecosystem. Heat's a big one. Um, what it's it's going to churn the water up. Uh, still water, you have you can have things like plankton in the still water. And plankton is a general term for these organisms free floating they, they have some some that live in both fresh water and in salt water we'll see plankton again when we get to salt water and phytoplankton are the base of these food webs and uh, zooplankton are ones that feed on the phytoplankton so freshwater wetlands what's a wetland well a wetland is an ecosystem in which the water covers the soil or is present or at or near the soil at least part of the year and it could be flowing or standing fresh salty or brackish and and the and once again like a lot of these places there they're they can serve as breeding grounds for many types of wildlife so the three main types are bogs marshes and swamps and this is a bog and it water is collecting in a depression and the, you can see these are inland. There, um, there's no, there doesn't seem to be an inlet or outlet to the to the bog. Now, here is a marsh, and what you're going to see is these are wetlands along rivers. Remember, they're along the rivers, and you can see I have a river flowing through here, and this area right here is going to be your marsh. And then finally, we come to swamps, and here the water's flowing very slowly, and you can see it looks like a forest like flooded forests. 
So there actually is a difference between a bog, a marsh, and a swamp, even though I always use them interchangeably. So estuaries are formed where rivers meet the sea, and you can see right here, here's the sea, and here's a river coming in and dumping into the, into the sea. And you're going to have, because you have the sea here and freshwater river here, you're going to have a mixture of the fresh and salt water. And tides coming in and out are going to affect that. So primary producers uh, for these include plants, algae, and bacteria. And the, uh, in the estuary food webs, you're going to see a lot of detritus. And detritus is tiny pieces of organic matter that provide food for organisms at the base of the estuary's food web. And I chose this picture because this is stuff rotting. It's grasses in this, uh, looks like a marsh, I guess, and the and it's rotting there. And that then becomes, the these be break into tiny pieces of, of organic material, which then become the base of the food web. <coughs> so here is a salt marsh. And we find these in the temperate zone. And it's once again an uh, estuary. And you have a lot of salt tolerant grasses above the low tide line and a lot of sea grasses under the, under the water there. And these are, of course, occur across near sea coasts. Here's a mangrove swamp, and I mentioned these before. And these are um, coastal wetlands. And you can find them a lot in Florida and Hawaii. I saw a couple while I was down there in, in Florida. And here you have to have salt tolerant trees and cold mangroves and a lot of sea grasses once again below the low tide line. Now let's look at marine ecosystems. Now we're heading out to sea. And we talked about light, and light is a huge factor in marine ecosystems. The upper layer of the ecosystem this layer right up around here is called the photic zone it's right on the very top it's just a sliver right here you can see the chart right here and that's the photic zone and in here because you have the light algae and other producers can grow in that area but it's very 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 thin below that is the aphotic zone which is permanently dark and here's where we have issues with photosynthesis occurring. And for that reason, you're only going to have chemosynthetic autotrophs. So the main, what are the main characteristics of the different marine zone? You have photic and the aphotic, and then you can divide it into zones based on the depth from the shore, the intertidal, the coastal ocean, and the open ocean. So let's look at it again. This would be the coastal ocean in this area here. Here's the open ocean. And here we actually, this is a trench right here um, that comes off when the con from the continental slope. So, whoop, I'm sorry. And I forgot to mention the intertidal zone. So here's your zones. Intertidal zone, the coastal ocean, and the open ocean. So organisms that live in the intertidal zone um, have to deal with the tide. So they're regularly being uh, lots of change in there and they're regularly um, being exposed to w uh, water going up to the high tide mark and water going to the low tide mark so you have different zones you have a zone where they're barely getting water up here and then as you go down this is all zone that part of the time has water part of it doesn't and then this part down here is always has water but very shallow water so what we end up with is zonation which means you have um, an arrangement of these of the different organisms going up and down the um, up and down the intertidal zone. So periwinkle zone below that, just below the high tide mark, would be barnacles. Then you're going to find mussels, and th this ha it, and these are hor it says here horizontal bands in that the um, horizontal bands come related to the depth of the water and how much water it gets from the tides. So let's head out to sea here again. Coastal ocean extends from the low tide mark and all the way out to the outer edge of the continental shelf. And here's your continental shelf, so your coastal ocean area is right 
there. It's not very big. And this area always is getting sunlight, so you're going to get a lot of photosynthesis. And if, because you're going to get that much sunlight, you're going to get a lot of plankton and many other organisms that are part of the food webs there. This is a special one. These are kelp forests. I, I put this little diver, this diver right here, to show you the height of these kelp forests. And this is a the dominant organism is a giant brown kelp. And these are just amazing communities. There's so many organisms that can live in these communities. Seals and all kinds of other organisms can benefit from this kelp. And it's a very, like I said, it's a very complex food web. Coral reefs, we probably all have heard about. They're found in the tropics. And the they're made up of these coral anal, um, animals. that, And the structure is made, mainly made up from the skeletons of these core of uh, these animals and once again a large diversity of organisms among these coral reefs this is a coral reef off the coast of Florida <coughs> and um, and the reefs grow with algae here's that word symbiotic the algae lives within the tissues of the coral and you have a symbiotic relationship there the ocean the open ocean and once again, we said this goes from the edge of the continental shelf outward. It's the largest marine zone. Think about it. It's, the, it's essentially all the water that isn't right by the shore. And, and it does have a, f a, f a photic zone, um, which is right at the top of the water. You can't go too far without losing light. And this is where most of the photosynthetic activity on Earth occurs. It doesn't occur in land. It actually occurs out in the open ocean. And obviously you have a variety of, sh of fishes and ships, but the thing is they all have to, st and you have marine animals, but once again they need oxygen, so they're close to the surface. <clears throat> and uh, the benthic zone is, we have, as we're at the zone where we at the bottom of the open ocean, and we have organisms that live there at the bottom of the ocean floor. And we call these organisms benthos, and the ocean floor is called the benthic zone, as we just said. And here's that uh, that uh, the vent th that allows uh, the chemosynthesis to occur. So, um, and they <coughs> and often you'll see that they actually depend on things that occur in the photic zone across above it, and then of course. If you're in the the deep sea vents, then you have chemosynthesis going occurring in this area, and that's what I chose a picture of here. And now onto the quiz. <coughs>